I just want to be given the chance. You were the pioneers that built women's football. The opportunity to succeed. Or even to fail. You are the league of their own. Figure out what the f you need to do mentally to be able to sacrifice everything for the girl next to you. You better knock the f shit out of her. Put the hurt on them first. Keep them on the ground. Stick your butt on their throat. On a beautiful night at the L.A. Coliseum, it's LFL football night. Hello, LFL fans. Mitch Mortaza joining you alongside SEC former NFL quarterback Bobby Huco. And a little bit later, Audra Marie down on the field. Now, Bobby, here we go. Seattle versus Los Angeles. These two played a very entertaining game a week ago up in the Pacific Northwest. If it wasn't for the heroics of Danielle Harvey punching out a ball very late, Seattle could have won that game. Fast forward to tonight, we get to do it all over again here at the Coliseum. It was one of the better games I've seen in the LFL, Mitch. It was intense, a lot of emotion, great defense, and big plays. In fact, it was a tune-up game for Seattle, but they should have won the football game. There was two defensive mistakes by cornerback Megan Hansen, got burnt for two touchdowns, and then this apparent touchdown catch by Bryn Renda. Watch this great play by Danielle Harvey of LA knocking the football out. You take those three plays out, and it's Seattle's football game. Absolutely, that was a close one. Now fast forward to this week, it's a different narrative. It's about the quarterback play, specifically for Los Angeles. Ashley Salerno, regarded as the best quarterback that has ever played this game, is out tonight with a deep contusion. They're expecting her to be out as long as, long as two months, potentially. Enter Michelle Angel, the second year all fantasy safety. She's also their backup quarterback. They have a lot of trust in her. She is a consummate leader. And in fact, this week we sent our own Audra Marie to sit down with the quarterback that has the LA spotlight on her tonight. So Michelle, tonight is your big moment. It's your first ever start as quarterback at the LA Coliseum. Tell me, how are your nerves? Um, I'm pretty excited, but definitely nervous. I'd be lying to you if I said that I wasn't. I'm usually that player right before the game that's leaning over the trash can. Everyone's asking if I'm okay. But you know, when I get that call to get out on the field, I'm ready. And tell me, has Ashley Salerno been a good mentor to you this week? Yes, definitely. Um, she's always, I've always regarded her as like my older sister. She's always been there to help me with everything. And, um, you know, as far as backing her up, she's the best quarterback in the league that the league has ever seen and arguably the best player in the league. So there's not as many opportunities, but she's prepared me for this moment. My coaches have prepared me for this moment and we're ready to get after it. Michelle Angel is a very confident young lady who has been preparing for this moment. She clearly does not feel the moment will overwhelm her. She said she just wants to get the first hit over and then get to playing football. Back to you guys. Thanks, Audra. Quite the young quarterback in Michelle Angel. And now that sets the stage. It's the Seattle Mist versus the Los Angeles Temptation. Kickoff is next. Follow your favorite LFL players and teams and receive breaking news stories. Like the LFL's official Twitter page, twitter.com slash mylfl. Back to LFL football night here at the LA Coliseum. Mitch Mortaza, Bobby Huco. And now we go down to the field with Audra Marie. Hey guys, I'm down here on the field with Coach Biz. Coach, tell me, how do you plan on easing your backup quarterback, Michelle Angel, into this game? This is her first start. Right, she has been working with our first team offense all season. Um, she's got a lot of reps in preseason. She's got a lot of reps in training camp. She'll be ready. I'm not worried at all. We're not going to change a damn thing for these guys. We're going to come out and kick their ass like we did in Seattle. I'm looking forward to watching you guys play. Coach Bizup really has a lot of confidence in Angel, but I'm really anxious to see both these teams. There's a lot of parity in the Western Conference, not only with Seattle and Los Angeles, but also Las Vegas. Should be an exciting matchup tonight. Absolutely, with only one point separating these two a week ago. And now Danica Brace getting us underway. Nice high kick, a short kick. That ball will be out at about the 19-yard line. Very good field position for Michelle Angel and company of Los Angeles. It really is going to be interesting to watch this quarterback, Michelle Angel, go against this solid Seattle defense. This defense has been upgraded by Coach Michelson from what it was last year, and last year was very, very good. 
The last game versus Los Angeles, this defense only gave up 89 yards. 89 all-purpose yards as we get our first look at the young starter, Michelle Angel. Yeah. Under center, already directing yeah. this LA traffic. Inside handoff, Corman Borso going to the right side. They call her the F-150 for a reason, and that time she took Danica Brace for about a four-yard ride. The F-150 is going to play a big role in tonight's game, trying to take the pressure off the youngster quarterback, Michelle Angel. That's an excellent point, Bobby. That is what the coaching staff yeah. said. They want to ease yeah. her into this offensive yeah. scheme. And now a quick screen again to Borso. And Borso breaking through tacklers, getting out to the LA 19. That'll be enough for a first down. For her first start under the bright lights, Michelle Angel throws a bullet. A tunnel screen outside. A good call by Coach Bizup for her first pass ever as a starter. Solid game for Los Angeles. Check that. The ball went all the way out to the Seattle 24. Misdirection handoff to Carmen Borso. And Borso featured on the first three plays from scrimmage. Gained four yards on that carry. And Borso is part of a stacked LA offense. Let's meet him. Laura Barba, center. Kim Chase, tight end. Danielle Harvey, tight end. Amanda Ruler, wide receiver. Monica Ademiel, wide receiver. Carmen Borso, running back. Michelle Angel, quarterback. I can't say it enough, but the story tonight is Michelle Angel and how she replaces probably the best quarterback in LFL history, Ashley Salerno. And they're bringing massive pressure. That is the center release play. And that is complete to Laura Barbara. Barbara gaining 13 yards. What composure. They bring the full blitz. Angel reads it, finds Barbara wide open in the LA Coliseum. Mitch, they've had Liner, Barkley, Sanchez, Palmer, now Michelle Angel playing here. And look at the heat Danica Brace brought. And to your point, Bobby, yeah. not razzled at all. Yeah. Angel stayed in the pocket and delivered a bullet to Barbara. Going back to the ground here to Carmen Borso, and she is stuffed. Lily Granston, the all-fantasy strong safety. And now let's meet the Seattle defense. Deanna Shaper Cotter, your defensive end. Stevie Schnorr, defensive end. Danica Brace, middle linebacker. Megan Hansen, corner. Katie Finlane, your corner. Lily Granston, safety. Jessica Hopkins, free safety. Now a second and goal play. Angel under center. Quick screen again. Monica Jeromello. And Jeromello getting down to the Seattle one yard line. And Seattle bringing the heavy pressure on Angel early. Watch the quick release by Angel. Gets it off to Jeromello. Almost gets it in. Gets down close to the goal line right on the one. Now a third and goal. And this Seattle defense being tested early. By the first time starter at quarterback. And that snap is fumbled. That looked like Carmen Borso lined up in maybe the Wildcat. Obviously not familiar with the center, Laura Barba. Trick play by Coach Bizza. She came up under the center, not familiar with taking snaps. Almost cost Los Angeles right there. Trick play, but it's tough to put a fullback taking a snap. Now a fourth and goal. A little over six minutes remaining here at the Coliseum. Angel back in the shotgun. She's going to try the right side quarterback sneak. And that is the athleticism we talked about. Angel possessing. And you can see at the end there, a little homage to LaDainian Tomlinson of the Chargers, her hero growing up here in Southern California. Michelle Angel showing wheels outside, racing around Chaper Cotter. It looked like Ashley Salerno, if you change numbers, the same exact style as Salerno. Is this a changing of the guard here, Mitch? Oh, I seriously doubt that, but yeah. it's good to know you've got a capable yeah. quarterback in backing up Ashley Salerno. Yeah. Now the extra point attempt. Angel rolling right, looking to the back of the end zone. Just overshoots her target, Kiara Patterson. That's a good point. Ashley Salerno is probably the best quarterback ever to play in the LFL. Tough to replace her, but Angel with a hot start. And Angel, under pressure, leads LA to an early lead. Love all the hard-hitting action of LFL on Fuse? 
Catch it live and in person at an arena or stadium near you. Sunday, June 21st, it's a Father's Day doubleheader in Ontario, California. Friday, July 3rd, the LFL returns to Seattle. Find out why it's the ultimate live fan experience. Back to LFL football night here at the LA Coliseum in a game where the silver and black Los Angeles Temptation have an early six to nothing lead. Now let's meet the starters for the Seattle offense. Megan Hansen, center. Deanna Shaper Cotter, your tight end. Danica Brace, tight end. Bryn Renda, wide receiver. Jessica Hopkins, wide receiver. Stevie Schnorr, running back. Keggy Matheny, your quarterback. The key tonight is gonna to be wide receiver Bryn Renda. She was shut down last week. She has to open up tonight. An early look at Stevie Schnorr. That is the former BC Angel of LFL Canada. And you gotta factor, it's gonna be Schnorr for Seattle and Carmen Borso for LA in the power run game. Now a hurry up offense for Seattle. Pitch out left side and Schnorr taken down for a loss. Agam Chichindu coming up. Chichindu is lethal when she comes off the edge. It's rare when you can stop Stevie Schnorr for a loss. That's a cornerback throwing her down on the ground. What a play by Agam. We talk about it every week. These LA corners are very physical. Agam Chichindu and Chelsea Hart. And that'll set up a third and seven now. KK Matheny in the shotgun, heavy pressure. That is Kim Chase in pursuit. And Chelsea Hart forcing her out of bounds. That'll be a gain of one setting up a fourth and six. And you can see Kim Chase. That's the outstanding rookie we've been talking about. Now let's meet the LA defense. Christina Sagarminaga, defensive end. Kim Chase, defensive end. Monique Axiola, middle linebacker. Agam Chichindu, lockdown corner. Chelsea Hart, your quarterback. Danielle Harvey, safety. Michelle Angel, your safety. Watch for those cornerbacks all night long. Chelsea Hart and Agam Chichindu, the best in the LFL. Now a critical fourth down early in this game. And that's Stevie Schnorr finding an opening on the outside. And stiff arming Danielle Harvey. That'll be a gain of 16 yards and will move the sticks. For a big back, she has breakaway speed. Chelsea Hart funneled the receiver inside, too far inside, and then Schnorr got around Hart. Great play by the big running back, Stevie Schnorr. I think what Hart was supposed to do as a corner was force the action to the inside, and she got sealed to the inside, and that gave Schnorr an opening. And Seattle took advantage. Now they're first and 10 at the LA 15. Matheny back in the shotgun, looking over the middle, an incomplete pass intended for Danica Brace. And you saw her rival, Monique Gaxiola, coming up. Brace was there, the ball was just off the money. Right in the pocket, great pocket for Matheny, but she couldn't hit Brace, threw it outside. Let's go, ladies. Keep playing aggressive, bring the heat. We got second down, we can't let, we stop him. We stop him now, we break that ego. We stop him now, we break that ego. And that's Moni Gaxiola, week in, week out. The consummate warrior middle linebacker. Now a second and 10 for this Seattle offense. LaShonda Fowler in motion, and they're gonna give it to her. Right side, right at Chelsea Hart. And you notice the Seattle offense is running to Chelsea Hart's side, not Agam Chichindu. Could that be something they've seen on game film, Bobby? Hart actually is a great tackler. That was a great call by Coach Michelson. They had a Wildcat set. They brought the left tight end around as a lead blocker. Chelsea Hart actually made a great open field tackle to stop Fowler. Now a third and five, ball at the LA 10 yard line. LA on top early in this one, six to nothing. But this explosive Seattle offense wasting no time. Ball at the LA 10. Now Matheny in shotgun, this time Renda in motion. And again, the handoff to Renda. And she'll be tackled for a loss by number 13, Monique Gaxiola. What an outstanding play by Gaxiola. She shred the block of Megan Hansen, just threw her off. She read the play, same play they just ran. She throws Hansen off and brings Bryn Renda down one-handed. Unbelievable play by Mo Gaxiola. 
ever wonder why she was inducted into the LFL Hall of Fame? Gaxiola, multiple knee surgeries, still playing at an all-fantasy level. Now a fourth and 11. Ball backed up to the 16-yard line after that loss. And Seattle looking to stay in this game early, trying the left side, Jessica Hopkins. And that is the six-year veteran coming up with a clutch touchdown. You knew it was only a matter of time before these two all-fantasy players got on the same page. Great throw by Matheny, getting it over the top of Agam Chichindu, and an equally great catch by Jessica Hopkins. And I tell you about these extra points. Extra points is what's gonna make the difference. Let's go. And Gaxiola could not be more right. Extra points often make the difference, especially when these two teams play. We saw it just last week with a score of 14 to 13. And now Seattle lining up for the one-point conversion. This will be from the one-yard line. Matheny looking over that defense. L.A. stacking the front line. That right side pitch out to Stevie Schnorr. Schnorr barreling over Chelsea Hart. And that gives Seattle an early 7-6 lead. Smart call by Coach Michelson getting the one point. When you have a back like Schnorr, look how big she is. Chelsea Hart is a great tackler, but you cannot stop her from one yard one-on-one. -on -one. And getting back to my point earlier in that series, it looked like they were testing Chelsea Hartside versus Agam Chichindu. Perhaps they've seen game film that has led them to believe they're going to have more success against Hart. I'll tell you what, Mitch, you're right. That was not a good series for either one of them. They're solid cornerbacks, but they went right down the field on Agam and on Hart. Now a first and ten. Angel back under center. That is Hart in motion. That's a right side toss play. More so gaining four yards. That is a consistent four yards every time they go to Borso. This is great football tonight. Both teams, both offenses went right down the field. 7-6. I love this LFL action. Second and six now as we wind down the first quarter. Angel quick screen again to Monica Jaramello. This time that's Seattle defense. Jessica Hopkins coming up from the free safety position. Jessica Hopkins in all fantasy safety has seen this play one too many times. She almost got there quick enough to pick it off. That's probably the last time that Coach Bishop calls that play. And that will officially bring us to the end of the first quarter. It has been the exact tough battle we expected with Seattle up by one. Warrior Black, the official eye black of LFL athletes. Three, one, two, three, Back to LFL football night here at the LA Coliseum. It is a Western Conference heavyweight battle as Seattle leads it 7-6. And Ashley Salerno, the injured starting quarterback, making her first appearance. She hates not playing. She knows you can't help the club when you're in the tub. Absolutely, one of the fiercest competitors in our game. Ashley Salerno now handing off the baton to Michelle Angel, and that's Angel deep in the pocket. That's Jessica Hopkins, the free safety reading Angel. Great read by the all fantasy safety. It was a man free coverage. Angel had time, protection, good protection. Tried to force it in. Hopkins made a great play, but you can't blame Angel. There's no chance when you don't take one. Her first start, but a great play by Hopkins. The Seattle secondary, including Hopkins, knowing this is Angel's first start, are definitely looking to have a field day. On the opposite end, you've got KK Matheny now entering her sixth season. Still chasing that Legends Cup championship. Now a first and 10 from the Seattle 22. That's another handoff to Schnorr. And the big back gaining three yards on the carry. KK Matheny has to love playing for Chris Michelson's offense. When you have a back like Schnorr right behind you, that's going to open up the passing game at some point during the night. Now a second and seven ball at the Seattle 25. Chelsea Hart and Agam Chichindu having a full night already as Seattle is sweeping right, sweeping left with Stevie Schnorr. 
and having a lot of success. The battle up front tonight has been won by Seattle on that offensive line. A second and seven, ball at midfield. Another pitch play to the right side. And Schnorr eking out another three yards. Danielle Harvey on the tackle. Hanson, Brace, and Schaefer, Cotter, are totally taking out Monique Axiola in the defensive front of LA. Three yards, four yards, three yards, four yards, right down the field. In talking to head coach Chris Michelson, that was one of his goals this offseason was to get bigger and more physical up front, and he's done just that. He's got the big up front, and then he went shorter at quarterback with KK Matheny. Now a third and four for Doug Flutie. Ball at the 22 of LA. Inside handoff, Stevie Schnorr. And Matheny definitely resembling Doug Flutie. Same type of elusiveness, good arm. I'm impressed with KK Matheny. Yeah, but Doug Flutie never had a running back like Stevie Schnorr. Look at that, she runs right through four tacklers. And now we've got another big fourth down play. Ball at the LA 19 yard line. Every yard, every inch counts in this heavyweight battle. We saw what happened last week and they're gonna measure this one. That was one of the arguments last week Seattle had. They wanted a measurement late in the game. Watch the play by Chelsea Hart, number nine right there. Pulls back Schnorr and she's short. If she didn't make that move right there, she would have got the first down. And there's the official measurement about half a yard short. And obviously Seattle going for it here. LFL rules, we do not have any punting. Everything is four down territory. Unless you're backed up inside your own 10 yard line. There's a pretty good chance that Coach Michelson is gonna call Stevie Shores number one more time. You give it to her four straight times, she'll probably get you 10 yards. KK Matheny very assertively walking to the line. And LA stacking the front a bit. There's the handoff as expected, as billed, and as delivered. Stevie Schnorr gaining two yards on the carry. Coach Michelson is known for his wide open West Coast offense. Here he's doing the complete opposite. Give it to Schnorr every down, but this is gonna open it up. I promise you it's gonna open up that passing game. Great blocking up front, great defensive stop, but again, you cannot stop Stevie Schnorr for less than one yard. Her leg drive is unbelievable. She never stops. Let's go. We gotta play fearless right here, ladies. None of this fucking pad cake bullshit. We gotta stop him, man. We gotta stop him. Let's go. Monique Gaxiola understanding the urgency of playing physical. Again, that Seattle front line absolutely dominating here in the first half. That's a fake toss play. Now looking to Stevie Schnorr. And Chelsea Hart coming up from the corner position, delivering the lumber on KK Matheny. Watch Hart. She makes the commitment to come in, and she doesn't stop. If she would have stopped and backpedaled because having a receiver in the flat, it would have been complete. She kept coming after KK and hit her, knocked that whole pass route down. A second and 10 now, ball at the 17 of Los Angeles. KK Matheny back under center. That LA defense looking to stop the run. We got trips right though, LaShonda Fowler. And Fowler streaking across the middle. Fowler gaining seven yards down to the LA 10 yard line. Great stock blocking outside, a tunnel screen out there to Fowler. Watch the blocks outside, both receivers. It's a trip set, one on one blocks and open it up for Fowler to come inside for a big game. Now a very convertible third and three for this Seattle offense, who's having their way tonight. Hey, right, we got to stop Third down, baby. Third down. Third down. Fuck, I should have had that tackle. God damn it. Mo Gaxiola continuing to urge on that LA defense. Now facing a third and three. Matheny back in the shotgun. And they love to look for Brent Renda here. That's Fowler, high motion. They're looking to Renda's side. Actually, that is Stevie Schnorr. And just overthrew her. She made the right reach. She found the man-to-man -man coverage. The problem was it was on Stevie Schnorr, not known as a great receiver. She had the man-to-man -man coverage, but she couldn't get by the defensive back. And now another critical fourth and down for this Seattle offense. They've already converted some big ones here in the first half. 
And as we hear this crowd finally come to life here at the LA Coliseum, their defense has had a tough start. Now Matheny under center. A stack line, pitch right, Stevie Schnorr gaining the yards, pushing the pile back. Schnorr gains five yards and that'll move the sticks and set up a first and goal for Seattle. Stevie Schnorr is a solid one cut runner. Watch the one cut, takes the pitch, bam, there's the one cut, that's all she needs and it's straight downhill, powers away for a first down for Seattle. She has been the power back this offense has missed for years. The previous one was Cam Warner dating back almost three seasons ago. And then as a quarterback, K.K. Matheny, they have never had a franchise quarterback. Now they have both of those two vital pieces. And two great receivers outside. They could be unstoppable. A first and goal ball at the five yard line. That handoff, nope, fake handoff. K.K. Matheny looking to the back of the end zone and finding LaShonda Fowler. And Fowler scoring on a five-yard pass. Great play action fake. It faked you out, Mitch, and the entire L.A. defense. Fowler wide open in the corner. A great strike. Great throw by K.K. Matheny. Wishbone 45 blast. Now let's motherfucking take it to him. Hit somebody, Jess. K.K. Matheny, that is the leadership that they have not had from the quarterback position ever in the history of this franchise. Now the extra point attempt, ball at the one yard line. And you could see that L.A. defense absolutely stacked. LaShonda Fowler showing some patience and getting lit up at the end. But nonetheless converting, that'll give Seattle a 14 to six lead. You're right, the leadership of K.K. Matheny was very apparent on that drive. Even on the extra point, she pointed out Hopkins to make a key block, and she did. An impressive nine-play, 28-yard drive, extending Seattle's lead. Back to LFL football night here at the LA Coliseum. Now let's go down to the field with Audra Marie. Hey guys, I'm down here on the field with Danica Brace. Danica, you guys are putting a lot of pressure on the young quarterback, Michelle Angel. Was that your strategy going into this game? Absolutely, she's a rookie, so every single opportunity we have, we're gonna make her feel it. Same thing for her playing on defense, I'm gonna hit her on the offensive side too. So they can let her stay out there, but we're gonna wear her down. She's too, she's too easy, she's too young and inexperienced. Well, good luck for the rest of the game. Back to you guys. That's a great point. I asked Angel how her stamina was gonna be playing offense and defense. She told me she can handle it, and she is ready for tonight's game. Hey, you got them where you want them. We get the ball the second half. You get a big stop here, our offense scores again. Night, night, motherfuckers. Chris Michelson, very, very confident that if they get a stop here, they're gonna be able to really take the momentum of this game. Michelson is intense. He said he's going after Angel all night long. We also heard that no. from Danica Brace, the middle linebacker. No. They intend on bringing a lot of pressure to Angel tonight. And now a handoff to Jeromello. Big hit coming up, Lily Granston and Jessica Hopkins. And now a little bit of fisticuffs. Michelle Angel right in the middle. Not impressed at all and certainly not intimidated. You gotta like the fire of Michelle Angel. A lot of people thought she would come in timid tonight, her first start. She's getting right in the middle of every fight so far. Now ball at the 16, second and nine from the shotgun in the flat to Sherry Awagwa. And that is scary, Sherry Awagwa. And she gained 16 yards on that pass play. What a read, she's playing like a veteran quarterback. They came with the full blitz. They found a Waga wide open in the flat for a big gain. LA is the city of angels. Tonight it's the city of Michelle Angel. What a night so far. That 16 yard pass play no. now sets up a first and 10. No. Ball no. at the Seattle 18 yard line. Inside handoff to Carmen Borso. And Borso motoring her way down to the Seattle 14 yard line. I gotta get down on her legs, that's mine. Gotta get in her legs, that's mine. 
Keep it up, though. I like her intensity also. She knows she's tackling too high. You can't hit Borso that high. You're going to get thrown back. Now a second and six play. Ball at the Seattle 14-yard line as we near the two-minute mark. And that does bring us to the two-minute mark of this first half. LA's offense driving with Carmen Borso and a feisty Michelle Angel. LFL Mobile, giving you access to the gridiron goddesses of the LFL with exclusive photos, videos, live game reporting, and fan promotions. LFL Mobile, download on your Android or iPhone. Back to LFL football night and a look at Ashley Salerno. She's got to be impressed with Michelle Angel tonight. Anytime you get hurt, you give another player the opportunity to show herself, and that's happening tonight. You remember Drew Bledsoe and Tom Brady, I'm not saying it's going to happen with Salerno and hey. Michelle Angel, but she's playing great hey. football. Excellent point, Bobby. Second and six now. Ball hey. at the Seattle 14 from the shotgun is Angel. Looking to the left side, flat, wide open. Danielle Harvey walking into the end zone. And what poise by Michelle Angel. Watch her eyes. Again, the quick read. Watch her eyes. Bam. Wide open and left, delivers the football, touchdown LA. That's a quarterback. An impressive quarterback here again, looking off the defense, coming back to the flat. You just don't see that from somebody starting for the first time. She looks like a veteran. Coach Bishop has got to be thrilled. Now he's got two quarterbacks that can win football hey. games for him. Now the extra hey. point attempt. They're going to go for two is LA. Ball at the three-yard line. Angel from the shotgun. Looking to the back of the end zone. Scrambling right. Finding Sherry Awagwa. And Awagwa, a big contributor on this drive. And again, Angel waiting for the last absolute second. Watch the arm strength here. Big heat from Brace. Across her body, getting hit. Throws a strike to Awaga. These fans are going gaga over Awaga. <laughs> That was a four-play, 35-yard drive. And Michelle Angel, the first-time starter, absolutely showing her moxie on that drive. 14-14. It's going to be interesting. You see K.K. Matheny, the veteran, and what she can do in a two-minute offense here in Seattle. This offense was absolutely built to be a quick-strike type offense with the big receivers on the outside. And KK Matheny, now a first and 10 play. That's a quick slant intended for Jessica Hopkins, went incomplete. The play was there, the front line of Kim Chase and Christina Cigar Managa put their hands up, and Matheny's only 5'2", she couldn't get the ball off in time. Now a second and 10. Seattle in the hurry up offense, despite their two timeouts. That's a fake handoff, rolling right as Matheny looking in the flat and threw it at the feet of Stevie Schnorr. You call it a quarterback? I mean, intentional grounding? And Monique Gaxiola lobbying for intentional grounding, but it was close enough to Stevie Schnorr. Actually, a good play by KK Matheny. There was nothing there. You throw it at the receiver's feet, so it's not intentional grounding. Incomplete pass, tee it up again. Now a third and 10. Seattle backed up at its own 15. That is a handoff to Schnorr, finding some real estate. Schnorr gains eight yards, and the clock will continue to run. We are nearing the one-minute mark of the first half. This is what you get when you have K.K. Matheny and Stevie Schnorr. You have two veterans. The veteran quarterback is not rattled at all. Third down, big gainer to Schnorr. A lot of time left. This is why he brought Matheny in. A fourth and two play now. L.A. stacking the line. Another handoff, and they smell that one out. Schnorr has no chance. And that is the middle linebacker, Mo Gaxiola stopping her for no gain. Watch Gaxio explode the offensive line of Seattle up, gets through everybody, and hits Snor behind the line of scrimmage for a big stop, LA football. And that was beating Megan Hansen again. Hansen having her problems last week as a corner, 
and this week as a center. No. Now you want to talk about no. a test. Here's a test, 49 no. seconds, and it's your first start. Michelle Angel going to her favorite target here, Sherry Awagwa. As the clock continues to run, LA does have two timeouts. Again, great read by Angel. Trip set, two go deep, and you have scary Sherry Awaga wide open underneath. Great read again by Michelle Angel. Now a second and one, ball at the Seattle 14. As the clock no. continues to run, and Ashley no. Salerno looking on. <laughs> LA does have two timeouts. That's a fake handoff, rolling right. Now Michelle Angel going to take off with it herself, gets out of bounds. And the clock's now down to 11 seconds. I'm not sure I would have, why not just call it one of the timeouts there earlier? You could have, they were trying to get a quick score right there, but you're right, call timeout. You have two timeouts, now you're down to 11 seconds. Your two timeouts are almost irrelevant. Poor clock management there by the LA offensive coordinator, David Bizzup. Now a second and goal. Ball remains at the Seattle seven yard no. line. No. Angel from the shotgun. No. Jaramillo in motion, low snap. Gonna run, right side, trying the end zone. And Danielle Harvey just cannot hold on. Lily Granston in coverage. Touchdown saving breakup there by Granston. Watch this, it looks like it's a touchdown. Again, great athletic play by Angel. She lets it rip, looks like it's a touchdown. Granston strips her to last minute, great play. And Harvey on the wrong side of a strip play. We saw her get one in Seattle, lost the battle there. We, we gotta really guard that, just six seconds. We, gotta, we need to stop here, guys, big, big stop. Yeah, we got a timeout, so once again, we got a timeout, get the ball hit, throw it quick. Look at Tia Miller, she's wide open on the cross. Let her get out a little bit though, because you're too close to the guard, you get a little bit faster, you get to that back corner and throw it, okay? They're gonna try to get two plays off, they're gonna try to pass it quickly, and then to call timeout if they don't get a touchdown, but the average play takes six seconds. I don't know if he can do it, that's but, what they're gonna try to do. But that was my point earlier, use your timeouts earlier, so no. you could save some time on the no. back end where your timeouts mean something. Absolutely. No. Angel back in the shotgun, looking to the left side, ball batted up, and that's intercepted in the end zone by Danica Brace. And that will officially bring us to the end of the first half. Watch this throw by Angel. Carmen Borso's got two hands on it. Should have brought it down. She had hands like feet right there. And it's an interception instead of a touchdown for Los Angeles. A blown opportunity for LA. And that'll officially bring us to the end of the half. It has been a heavyweight battle back and forth with neither giving up an inch. Dog, we're not letting them take this from us again. No. We're not fucking doing it, dog. I don't give a shit how many ugly ass banners are hanging out there. I don't give a fuck. We're not giving up our game. We're not going 0-2. Especially not to sorry ass LA. Okay? So fuck up, step up and let's go. A fiery Danica Brace inside that Seattle Mist locker room as we welcome you back here to LFL Football Night. Bobby Hugo, Mitch Mortaza. Now, Bobby, here we are. The two teams that played a competitive game last week are doing just that again. Absolutely. Last week, a single point separated these two teams, and here we are again, 14 to 14. For Seattle, I was really impressed by Stevie Schnorr in the first half. She had a solid 45 yards rushing on the ground. And for Los Angeles, even though she threw two interceptions, Michelle Angel, their new quarterback, I really like her composure, her poise and confidence in the pocket. I look for her to have a good second half. Yeah, despite those two interceptions, she did throw a touchdown, and she held her own in the first half, being tested by that Seattle defense. In fact, Angel also opened up the scoring on this one-yard touchdown run, giving LA an early 6 to nothing lead. Then it was Seattle answering KK Matheny, finding Je the veteran Jessica Hopkins on a 14-yard touchdown pass, giving Seattle a 7-6 to lead. Again, then Matheny in the second quarter. This time, LaShonda Fowler on the receiving end of a five-yard touchdown pass, 
That extended Seattle's lead to 14 to six. Los Angeles did answer very late in the second quarter. Michelle Angel looking like a veteran quarterback, engineering a four play 35 yard drive and then finding who? Danielle Harvey on a 14 yard touchdown pass. That brings us to halftime score of 14 to 14. Let's look at the first half stats. I really like the balance of both teams, Seattle and Los Angeles. The big difference, however, is the two interceptions thrown by quarterback Michelle Angel. And that will officially bring us to the end of halftime festivities here at the LA Coliseum. As the teams return to the field, we get ready for the second half. Kickoff is next. Champion Gloves, the custom and official on-field glove of LFL athletes. Back to LFL football night in downtown Los Angeles as we look at our two starting quarterbacks. Michelle Angel, outstanding, seven out of 10. She had two picks, one was tipped. But look at that rating, great first half for Angel. KK Matheny playing solid football at the quarterback position. Great to see a pair of franchise type quarterbacks We've been very spoiled in the Western Conference. You also have Cindy Cummings of the Las Vegas Sin. Great quarterback play in the West. Now the third quarter about to get underway. And Mo Gaxiola trying to fire up the silver and black crowd. A nice deep kick to Hopkins. And Hopkins on the return now. And what a takedown by Agam to Chindu. Was, that was almost a one-handed tackle. One-handed tackle? It was a one-handed punch. Agu Chichinju just knocks out Jessica Hopkins. What? This is not a tackle. Bam! Get down. That's a knockout. I have never seen somebody be able to tackle somebody with a head slap. I'm cool, motherfucker. I got you. Wow. I, I would like to see Agu Chichindu in the ring as a boxer. That was one punch there, bitch. Ronda Rousey is officially put on notice. Agam Chichindu is the real deal. Wow. Now a first and 10 ball at the Seattle 11 yard line. Hopkins in motion at the top of the screen. Inside handoff, Stevie Schnorr. And Schnorr gaining nine yards. Very quietly having a great game. This does look like a UFC fight. They're just slashing each other up and down the field, punching each other. Watch the blocking at the point of attack. Big hole for Schnorr, she gets a big gainer down the field. And that's Agam Chichindu again on the tackle. The impressive corner. I've always thought she'd be better at middle linebacker, a very physical player. Now a second and one play from the 20 yard line again to Schnorr, finding a little bit of an opening. And she turns that little opening into seven yards. We've talked about that offensive line of Seattle all night. Hanson, Brace, and Shaper, Cotter. They're opening big holes for Stevie Schnoor to get down the field. Now a first and ten early in the third quarter. Mo Gaxiola still coaching him up on defense. And now KK Matheny under center. First and 10, ball at the LA 18 yard line. Check that to 23. Matheny looking down the field to Brent Renda. And I'm not sure she held on. No, that is an incomplete pass. We haven't heard much from Brent Renda tonight. The play was there, great post corner move. Look at her feet. The feet were in, she just dropped the ball. KK a little bit late getting the ball out there. Great route by Brent Renda. Impressive wide receiver and Brent Renda. You've got to factor at some point this season, those two are really going to click, and the Western Conference defenses are going to be in serious trouble. Two great players. Now a first and ten ball at the 23. Another handoff to Schnorr in the open field. And Schnorr barreling down for 19 yards. Kim Chase finally tracking her down. Watch the block by center Megan Hansen on all fantasy linebacker Monique Gaxiola. Seal block, boom, there's the block. Great read by Schnorr, opens up a huge hole outside. Michelle Angel, there's no way she's gonna bring down Schnorr one-on-one. -on -one. 
That is not a bull you want to be facing in the open field. And there's the competitive fire of number 15, KK Matheny. Has her offense down to the LA four yard line. Now the LA crowd coming to life. Right side pitch play to Stevie Schnorr. And Schnorr barreling her way into the end zone. And rightfully so. L.A. is on skates going backwards again. They went right at Chelsea Hart. She couldn't come up and make the tackle. Angel again. She, there's no way she's bringing down Schnorr. Right now, Monique Gaxioli cannot believe the way her defense is playing. I got to tell you, there is something on game film. We all got to help each other out. Fuck, we got to go to game. There has got to be something on the game film that showed the Seattle offensive coordinator, Chris Michelson, that Chelsea Hart is the weak link on those sweet plays. She's a great player, but you're right. They're going at her all night long. Now the extra point attempt from the one-yard line to Schnorr. No, that is Jessica Hopkins, and Hopkins barely getting in. And now Seattle taking a 21 to 14 lead. To your point, they went right at Chelsea Hart again. And now we go to a timeout. It is the Seattle offense looking impressive. Back to third quarter action here on LFL football night. Bobby Huco, Mitch Mortaza, and Audra Marie in a game that Seattle leads 21 to 14. Michelle Angel and company going back to work. Jaramillo in motion, handoff. Carmen Borso, nothing doing. Danica Brace, the middle linebacker. Great hit by Brace. Look at Michelle Angel, she's getting into another fight. Unbelievable, the quarterback going after people. I have never seen a quarterback with that much fire. And she's taken up for her offensive players. But a great stop by Danica Brace here and Lily Granston. Granston came up from the safety position, but watch Michelle Angel. She's like Brett Favre getting right in the middle of everything. No gain on that previous play. Now a second and 10 again from the 15 yard line. This time Hart in motion. And we've got our first penalty of the night. Prior, prior, false start, number seven, five yards, second half. Jeremy Hewick, our head referee, and this crew have been relatively quiet tonight. I believe that is our first penalty of the night. A well-played game. Coach Michelson's really happy the way his defense is playing so far. Michelle Angel, she has to calm down right now. It's great that she's getting fired up. The team rallies behind her, but she's the quarterback, the leader. She has to stay composed. That false start on Los Angeles. That'll back him up and create a second and 15. Ball at the 10-yard line. And Chelsea Hart in motion again. Now a toss play to Carmen Borso and absolutely destroys the rookie, Katie Finley. Wow, did you get the license play for that Mack truck? Katie Finley right now cannot believe the way she got hit. What a run by Carmen Borso, wow. That was a five yard gain by Borso, showing that power style running attack, similar to Seattle's Stevie Schnorr. And Michelle Angel with a tall task now, trailing this game by seven. A little under five minutes remaining in the third quarter. Now from the shotgun, looking down the field, checking down to Sherry Awaga. And Awaga gaining almost 18 yards. Coach Michelson not happy with this secondary. Great read again by Michelle Angel. She's got that Dan Marino quick release. Finds Awaga wide open in the flat for a huge gain for the temptation. Hey, that's the only thing keeping this fucking game. Coach Michelson not happy with the secondary, as we mentioned. He felt that is what cost him the first game when LA connected on those two deep passes. 
And they're starting to show the wear and tear again. That's right, Megan Hansen, she failed on two plays last week. But I'll tell you what, with Michelle Angel at quarterback, this LA Temptation offense has not skipped a beat from the loss of Ashley Salerno. Now a first and 10 ball at the 17 of Seattle. This is a design rollout. Angel knows she's gonna throw the ball and Monica Jaramillo just lost the ball. I'm not sure if that was a design rollout and looks like Jaramillo's as confused as I am. It was a design play, in fact, a great play. She got two receivers, one up wide open in the flat, but Jaramillo kept, she stopped and she kept going, it could have been a touchdown. A little miscommunication, obviously, most of the reps going to Ashley Salerno. So it will take time for number seven to mesh up. Again from the shotgun, looking down the middle, evading the rush, and a monster hit. That looked like Stevie Schnorr just unloaded. And now they're talking up a bit, but Michelle Angel not giving up anything. Good job by Angel getting rid of the football, but that hit is a quarterback's nightmare. You get power driven into the ground right on your throwing shoulder. It's fantastic she came out of that without an injury. Now a third and 10 play. Angel back in the shotgun. Looking down the field, inside. That is the Sherry Awaga. Awaga has absolutely become her favorite target. Kind of a Rob Gronkowski, a big target at tight end. Two receivers were open, she went underneath, but Carmen Borso was open deep for a touchdown. She took the short receiver, Awaga, for a short game, but Carmen Borso was open deep. Michelson cannot be happy with his defense right now. A first and goal ball at the seven yard line. Handoff going to Borso. And Borso gets down to about the one yard line. A gain of six before Lily Granston stops her. You gotta love the way Borso runs the football. She's not an east-west runner. She makes one little cut, then she moves. She read Laura Barber's block on Brace and got a great gain for LA. Now a second and goal. And Carmen Borso coming up again. And that's the Wildcat play not fooling Seattle. LaShonda Fowler smelling it out. When you have a back like Borso in the backfield, you don't have to have trickery. She has a problem again taking a snap that she just handed her the football. That's a loss, that's a loss. Half a yard back, half a yard back, come on. Her goddamn hand, her ball's in her goddamn hip. Coach Michelson doing his best job at officiating tonight. And this is what he was talking about, the ball being back. Still about a yard out and not converting. Listen, you guys, when it's third and 10, they're releasing the fucking tight end every time. What are you sitting back for? Holy shit. Yeah, see that big girl run out and do like this? As soon as you see this. I mean, we're putting them in spots where we can stop them and we're fucking ourselves. Listen, you gotta buck the fuck up. Watch that middle. You mentioned it. Sherry Awaga is open all night long, and Coach Michelson cannot believe it. He's coached him up to cover that, and they're letting her wide open. And here's a big play, third and goal. With LA trailing by seven, Angel in the shotgun, design rollout. Danica Brace showing speed alongside Lily Granston. I don't think we could give enough accolades to number seven, Lily Granston. Lily Granson, she fires up from the secondary. Right for a second, it looks like Michelle Angel's gonna walk in, and then Brace and Granson show up out of nowhere to stop her. Now a fourth and goal. This Seattle defense really digging in. This is a monster goal line stand, potentially. Ball remains at the two yard line. Barba under center. Shotgun, Angel throws across her body wide open is Danielle Harvey. And how did she get that open? When you have the run pass option with a quarterback like Angel, man to man coverage, she just ran the same play and ran it. Now she pulls up across the field. Nobody covered Harvey. And a lot of people think she's a one trick pony just as a strong defensive player, but she's also an outstanding tight end. Now the extra point attempt. LA actually attempting to go for two here. 
Same play, this one intercepted Megan Hansen, and this should be a dead ball. Hansen's gonna run it the length and the officials are running alongside her. This should be a dead ball as you Number cannot return an extra point attempt. And we'll see what the officials call here. No, it's not! It's an it's extra point, it's returnable! Coach Michelson is off there, it's not returnable. The rules clearly say you cannot return a missed extra point. The worst pass of the night all night for Angel. She had a receiver in the corner wide open. She just threw it right at the Seattle defender, but this is dead right there. There's no score. Megan Hansen making God up for her game Anytime last week. Two people moving their it's a goddamn false start. No, you relax. Call the goddamn game. Coach Michelson just Try barking no up good. a storm at the officials. And they're going to mark it off correctly. That cannot be returned for points. That's a dead ball, similar to the NFL. And now Seattle will take over, still up a point. And we'll see if that failed conversion haunts Los Angeles late in this game. Coach Michelson totally frustrated. That L.A. drive, 10 play, 35 yards, took a lot off the clock and a lot out of that defense of Seattle. Six minutes, 18 seconds. That is an eternity in the LFL. Oh, big hit. Moni Gaxiola lighting up Ren Renda, but not before Renda picks up six. Watch this hit. Kim Chase absolutely destroying KK Matheny. She gets up like the trooper she is, completed the pass, but not much of a gain. And we've got a timeout on the field and a very physical game with the Western Conference on the line. Back to fourth quarter action. It's LFL football night. The Seattle Miss versus the LA Temptation. Now let's go down to the field. Hey guys, I'm down here on the field with Coach Maxson. Coach, if you lose this game, you'll be 0-2. Tell me, how important are these last 10 minutes? Well, they're obviously it's crucial. We want to win every game. We won't be out of it. We got a long season ahead of us still. But we need to control the tempo. We need to go down, score, put it down their throat, and put this game out of reach. Good luck for the rest of the game. Back to you guys. Absolutely the game plan that Coach Michelson told me he wanted to execute during our interview this week. It all comes down to that quarterback right there, K.K. Matheny. Can she pull this off? Last week they should have won, but they lost at the end of the game. Let's see if she can do it tonight. Seattle holding on to a one-point lead as we start the fourth quarter. Matheny handoff to Schnorr. And the bull in a china shop, gaining seven yards. I cannot say enough about the blocking of center Megan Hansen. Again, totally blowing out all fantasy linebacker Monique Gaxiola. She cannot believe what's happening to her defensive front tonight. Hey, let's do this for Ashley, man. For us, for our home crowd. Let's make the difference out here. Defense, let's make the difference out here, man. Mo Gaxiola urging on the defense, saying do it for the injured Ashley Salerno. Do it for Temptation Nation. And let's do it for one another. Another handoff, this time to Jessica Hopkins. Only gaining a yard, that was Chelsea Hart, who's been used and abused on the corner all night, but coming up to make the stop there. Chelsea Hart finally said enough is enough. She's an all-fantasy cornerback. She came up and just stumped Jessica Hopkins for a short game. Now a second and nine. This crowd trying to get behind this defense. K.K. Matheny looking over the secondary. Faking the handoff, looking down the field to the right side, finding Brandon Renda. 
and Bren Renda doing her best, Jerry Rice. Great route by Bren Renda. Inside stem release, post corner, right here, breaks Danielle Harvey's ankle on that move, and then tight ropes the sideline. Watch her feet right here, stays in, controls the football. Again, a great play by her, but a great pass by KK Matheny right on time. That pass play went for 12 yards. We talked about it earlier in the game. If those two ever click, this LA offense is going to be very tough. And we've got a challenge. Apparently, Los Angeles is saying she did not yeah, get her feet in. But she was going out of bounds. What? That was a catch. That was way good. Not even close. Hey, who are you trying to talk to? Not even close. You're going to juggle the ball and fucking bounce. Thank you, wasting time now. These goofballs might call it though, who knows? I saw it right here, close to personal. Yeah, I'm sure you did. Yeah, I'm sure you did. Let's go, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. He's gonna have a heart attack. You're ready, girl. <laughs> These two coaches are absolutely passionate. And you can see both feet were in. I think LA is challenging possession. And you could see that ball might be loose. The ball comes out. The ball came out. The ball came out. The ball fucking came out. And they showed it. She fucking fell the ball on the ground. You gotta keep all the way to the ground. He's one foot, that's it. One foot. They gotta catch all the way down. After review, the receiver had possession with the ball, two feet inbounds. The hit. Hit it out of bounds. We have a complete catch. Ruin on the field, stand. Okay, apparently they're gonna keep it as called down on the field. That is a passive catch. And Coach David Bizup is absolutely fired up, and rightfully so. That appeared like Brent Renda did not have possession. Had her feet in, but did not have possession. I actually think she did have possession, and then she got hit, but it was already controlled, so the ball was fumbled out of bounds. I think it's a reception. Inconclusive. Agree to disagree. First and goal, ball at the nine-yard line. KK Matheny, right side pitch play. Stevie Schnorr, Schnorr gaining three yards. That was a huge call by the referees right there. Both coaches had good arguments. But if L.A. would have got the call, it could have been a huge turning point in this game. Absolutely. Now Seattle set up really well. Second and goal from the six-yard line. And a vital game in the Western Conference. If Seattle wins, they move to 1-1. One one. Los Angeles holds on and wins. They go to 3-0 and oh in firm control. So this is, by all counts, a must-win for Seattle. No question, this game is on Coach Michaels and he has to win this game. Now a left side toss play, Akam Chachindu. And that is absolutely the wrong side. And she's reminding him of just that. What intensity. Wow. Agam Chichindu, she has a lot of class, but unfortunately, most of it's third. <laughs> wow, she can talk. Now third and goal. This crowd coming to life. They realize the importance of this series. Ball at the LA eight-yard line. Matheny trying to bark out orders over this crowd. And now Matheny scrambling right, looking down to the back of the end zone and finding Bren Renda. And that's good for a Seattle score. KK Matheny, she can throw from all platforms. Watch this. She scrambles, attacks the line of scrimmage. Chelsea Hart has to commit to go after the quarterback, which leaves Bren Renda wide open in the end zone. And I'm not sure she committed to going after the quarterback, Chelsea Hart. She was in no man's land. That's it. If, she, if the quarterback attacks her, she has to come up. If she stays back, then KK runs in for a touchdown. Hey, make up for now. I know you're playing both sides, man, but come on. We got you. 
We need each other. Gaxiola addressing her secondary, and specifically Michelle Angel, who might have been beat on that play. Now the extra point attempt, ball at the one yard line. Fakes the handoff, Danielle Harvey all over KK Matheny. Where has that explosion been defensively? All night long, Seattle block great. Here, they left Harvey wide open, untouched. She hit KK Matheny and Lily Grant to hit them both for no gain. Huge play by Danielle Harvey. Now this sets the stage for Michelle Angel. Your first start as a quarterback in the LFL. It's at the LA Coliseum on national television in prime time. This is what competitors live for. And she's replacing a legend in Ashley Salerno. A first and 10 play now. That is an inside handoff. Sherry Awaga, and that is an absolute load to have to bring down. I don't know why they don't give her the football more often. Awaga on this Y inside handoff just destroys people. She is a monster, a beast with the football. You have to give it to her more often. From Canoga Park, California, five foot 11, 185 pounds. That is a lot in the open field. And now Angel looking down the field, scrambling left, heavy pressure, and absolutely sandwiched. Michelle Angel's got to learn not to take hits like that. You do that by throwing the ball away. When there's nothing there, just throw it away. She's got nothing, steps up in her pocket, nothing, throw it away. She tries to scramble, gets some yardage, but she's not going to last long in his league taking shots like this. Wow. That's Danica Brace coming up from the middle linebacker position. Her and Stevie Schnorr, both a load to maintain. Angel looking down the field, right side. Again, looking for Jeremello. And it looked like she overthrew her a bit. After taking that hit on the last play, she delivered that ball too soon. This kind of drive is where you miss the veteran, Ashley Salerno. She's done this so many times in her career takes it in for a touchdown. Let's see if Michelle Angel somehow can pull an Ashley Salerno type drive. I don't think there is a replacement for that kind of experience with Salerno dating back to 2010. And this young lady under the spotlight for the first time in her LFL career. Now a third and 13. Amanda Ruler in motion. And that looks to be a false start, either Danielle Harvey or Amanda Ruler. And a snap, false start, number 16. Still 13. Definitely a communication problem. Amanda Ruler goes on one. Danielle Harvey follows her. The ball goes on two. But other than that, it's been a pretty clean game for this offense tonight. That is one of the impressive factors that this first time starter at quarterback has been able to manage this offense. Now a third and 18, Ruler in motion again. This time on side, and Angel looking down the field, has a receiver, that is Monica Jaramello. And that is a 32 yard pass and reception. Michelle Angel climbs up in the pocket, delivers the strike to Jaramillo wide open. It was man coverage, obviously a botched okay. coverage. The out? That was Daniel Harvey from the tight end. She shouldn't even be worried about her. They motioned over. When they motioned over, she's got her man. Head coach Chris Michelson not happy with the defensive scheme as LA now lines up for what appears to be a two-point conversion. This is interesting, because usually you'll go for the tie at home. But LA is elected to go for the win here. Angel back to pass in the play of the game across her body. And not much of an effort by Carmen Borso. I'm not sure I agree with this call at all. I totally agree with you. Three minutes left in the game, you go for two instead of tying it up. There's a lot of time left on the clock. I agree, Borso should have caught that football and dove for it. But the call by Coach Bishop, I don't know if I agree with that at all. 
now you can see Los Angeles electing to go for the onside kick, now being forced into the onside kick versus converting on the one-point conversion and living to play another down. Two minutes and 44 seconds left. That is an eternity in the LFL. I totally disagree with Coach Bizzup going for two this early in the game. Absolutely. Go through the logic of this one. You've got your backup quarterback in a game that you were a heavy underdog in. You have an opportunity to get a tie and live the fight potentially in overtime. Now you're forced into an onside kick scenario to just have a shot. Absolutely. You have Carmen Borso, one of the strongest backs in the LFL in your backfield, who can get a yard any time of the game. You tie the game up and you play defense. And now here is the all-important onside kick. And I'm not sure what the strategy is here. That was a deep kick. And Jessica Hopkins simply fields it and runs out of bounds. Seattle had all their defenders up expecting the traditional onside kick. LA tried to pooch it over their head into the dead area, but obviously it did not work. LA does have one timeout remaining as well as the two minute warning. Listen, Ryan, we need one first down and the ball game is over. Get a first down, CD. On one, ready. KK Matheny urging the front line. They know they are one first down away from their first win of the 2015 season. And there is the handoff, Stevie Schnorr. Schnorr gaining four yards. You know what the offensive philosophy is in this drive. Give the ball to your power back, Stevie Schnorr. She's gotten three and four yards every carry all night long. Why not this drive? That's Michelson's philosophy. Give the ball to Schnorr. And L.A. looks like they're going to allow this to go down to the two-minute warning and conserve their only timeout of the half. We have no play right here because it's about to go to two-minute warning. But listen to me. You can if hear we get a K.K. First down, after this two-minute warning, it's over. Telling her team continuously warning. that all we need is one first down. And that will officially bring us to the two-minute warning in a game that has lived up to its billing. Like your favorite LFL players and teams and receive breaking news stories, the LFL's official Facebook page, facebook.com slash mylfl. Back to LFL football night, and we travel to the Heartland next week. That's the Omaha Heart with Jessica Ripp hosting the Chicago Bliss and Dina Fagiano next week on LFL football night. Really looking forward to that Omaha. They acquired free agent quarterback Anaka Dixon, my old quarterback, went back when I coached Miami, and she is fun to watch. She is the Michael Vick of the LFL. And Leek Pay of the Minnesota Valkyrie, as well as Heather Hudson of the Baltimore Charm. A very different look in Omaha. And now we see KK Matheny trying to close out this game. Don't fight for too many yards because they're gonna be ripping. And Matheny now barking orders at Stevie Schnorr to go down on contact. We don't need the yardage, we need the time off the clock. Second and six ball at the nine yard line, Schnorr. Stevie Schnorr gaining four yards and the clock will continue to run as LA does not elect to call a timeout here. That was an excellent point by KK Matheny. She said, get the yardage, but don't struggle for extra yardage too much because that's the time when you get the ball stripped from you. LA, if they can get a stop here, I believe this is where you've got to use your timeout. This is a vital third down, potentially the game. If I was defensive coordinator Tui Sui Noah, I would have all seven defenders going after Stevie Schnorr. You know she's getting the football. A third and two now, ball at the 13 of Seattle. And you can absolutely see that front line of LA teeing off. Handoff does go to Schnorr. That will be enough for the first down. And that should propel this Seattle Miss team to their first win of the 2015 season. Wow, how strong is Schnorr? They knew she's getting the football, and she personally took the LA defense for the first down on her shoulders. Under a minute, 
kind of a hopeless feeling for Los Angeles as the clock continues to run. LA will move to two and one, while Seattle will move up to one and one. The good news for Los Angeles, you're still in first place of the Western Conference. Now a first and 10 play. This will be the final play from scrimmage. Matheny eyeing the clock, and that'll be it. No, LA's gonna call a timeout. They wanna prolong this misery. I'm not sure That's I understand the logic. Hey. Good job, baby. Good job. Good job. Yeah. Good job. Yeah. Hey, way to fucking run the ball. How's that shit taste? Hey. Good job, baby. Good job. Okay. We got shit yeah. to work on now. Yeah, I know. I know. That's okay. We, we, we got one. We stole, they stole one. We stole one. Hey, don't lose this. Chris Michelson, obviously well aware of the importance of winning a game here on the road after they lost that heartbreaker last week. And it'll only take one more play from scrimmage. You got to look back at that call, that gutsy, controversial call going for two instead of one with three minutes left in the ball game. That'll be something that may haunt Coach David Bizzup as Coach Bizzup and Coach Suanoa have not lost as a coaching tandem dating back to 2010, believe it or not. This Western Conference is up for grabs. You got three solid teams. You got Seattle with a huge win tonight, LA in first place, and don't forget about Las Vegas. And how long can LA afford to be without Salerno? That is the million dollar question. Honestly, I think LA is fine with or without Salerno. I love her as a quarterback, but the way Michelle Angel played tonight, she was solid as a passer, as a runner, as a leader. I think they have a great situation at quarterback. Despite the loss, Los Angeles still in first place with Michelle Angel with a big debut on national television. It was a heavyweight battle throughout for Bobby Huco, Audra Marie Walterhouse, our producer Connor Schofield. This is Mitch Mortaza. And we will see you next week from Omaha on LFL Football Night.